um, because of the, the technological um, um, constraints, I, I I don't want to you know be um, on my back, um, but um, outside is that. Anyway, um, while we get this going, uh, I think it's important taking into consideration the uh, the statement about Ukraine and what is happening also uh, in Europe, in Greece, and all these uh, uh, uprisings because of the neoliberal uh, austerity measures. That we take a look at Latin America, where. Um, Almost the opposite is happening. That despite of the economic um, uh, crisis, Latin America has been able is one of the areas in the world that has been able to deal with the crisis in a better way. And in fact, some of the countries has have improved, and and the gap between the rich and the poor are diminishing at the same time that the European is, is expanding. Um, so it's it's not a a, a, an accident that the, the, the revolutions and the processes that are progressive in Latin America are being dealt with very hostily with U.S. imperialism. Uh, it happened in Honduras, it happened in Paraguay, they try in Bolivia, Ecuador. Of course, Cuba has always been the target and continues, and now it's Venezuela, which since Chavez took office, it has been uh, under the threat of the United States and its oligarchy in, in you know, the bourgeoisie in, uh, uh, in Venezuela. Uh, but now it, it has really deepened and has increased this, this hostility. So I have, um, actually, it, it's a PowerPoint that I received from the uh, department, uh, foreign department, Cancillería, uh, of Venezuela, and I added uh, other things that, and, and made it, you know, part of my own <laughs> presentation. Uh, but because it, this is a developing um, uh, uh, situation, you know, some things uh, are not completely uh, in the order that they should be. Uh, so basically, I wanted to cover a few uh, things, and I, I don't have things, I have an outline, so I don't have, you know, a, a talk written, so I don't want to extend. Um, if I if I know how many minutes, and if somebody can time me, like, uh, so, so I get a sense of, okay. Okay. Uh, there are several points that I wanted to bring, and it's, it's the context of why this coup is happening. Uh, Focusing on, on the United States because that's that's basically um, the culprit, uh, both the economy and the politics of, of that uh, in, in of that context. Uh, a little bit of details of this coup attempt, what's happening, what are who are the current actors, what is being targeted within uh, Venezuela, um, and then the the um, media campaign that has been developed. Uh, against Venezuela, which uh, which is really very uh, as as the most hostile that I, it's always hostile, but this has been the most virulent and the most hostile that I've ever seen. Um, and and lastly, you know, uh, U.S. Uh, government's uh, uh, statement, including Obama's statement in Mexico yesterday, and Maduro's response and the people's uh, response. So. Um, Um, one thing, uh, one thing that I wanted to say is that this, this uh, coup attempt has been, as I said before, has been in the beginning, and it will not finish now. Mm -hmm. It will not finish until the revolution is is deepened, and until the people in Venezuela take power. Uh, that's, and and even then, you know, it will be another phase, like what is happening to Cuba, it's to defend whatever the gains um, and, and the revolution. Uh, but in the meantime, the importance is, is really to preserve the gains of the, Bolivar of the Bolivarian revolution 
and, and prevent a route backwards of, of the revolution. That, that right now, it's, it's, it's a, a big, big uh, uh, point of importance. And to do that, it also needs, besides the people and you know, the movement in Venezuela, it needs, it's, and it's very important, the uh, solidarity and the accompaniment, not only statements of solidarity, but, but concrete uh, support from the international community, particularly from the United States, to the revolutionary forces uh, in Venezuela. Um, so we have, What is, what is the context uh, where this is happening? What you want to do with the white show? From current From current Okay. Uh, the context is, it's, it's an attempt of coup, of course, by right-wing forces that are supported. They are always supported by the U.S. Uh, and these are the most virulent, the most, the ultra, the ultra, ultra reactionary, ultra right forces of the right of Venezuela. Um, and and this, the important thing is this is not only against Venezuela itself, but it's the whole process, the whole region is at stake uh, with this. Um, and the United States is trying with Venezuela, why try with Cuba? The differences, and there are big, big differences. Well, in Cuba there was an armed revolution, and the oligarch who was expelled, or they migrated, uh, went to particularly the United States, but other imperialist uh, countries, but, but particularly the United States, in, and, uh, and, and particularly you know, Florida. Um, but there are many, many other places. But in Venezuela, the oligarchy wants to stay because they think that they can overturn the, the system. And then you haven't seen the migration of, of many people from Venezuela, and of the oligarchy. They, they decided that they are there to stay because they want to change, not because they want uh, any engagement or negotiations uh, with the government, which, by the way, Maduro has tried to have negotiation now because of the whole violence, even before the coup started, and, and they have not, they, they have not, uh, they have refused. Um, so the context of this, um, is the economy. Um, and the economy taking in consideration the Venezuela and the US trade. Uh, Venezuela trades with the United States, and it's actually the main trade partner of Venezuela. Uh, who has the largest crude oil reserves? That has been proved. You know, the the, the few last years have been proved uh, and, and found the, the largest were uh, crude reserves. PDVSA has three Seco refineries in the United States and more than six thousand stations here. You you see, you know, Seco gas stations uh, in many places. There are six thousand. In 2013, uh, last year, Venezuela imported from the United States more than $13 billion. But that was less than the previous year. So because Venezuela is trying to expand and now it's trying to have trade not only with other uh, place, uh, uh, countries in, in, in the region, but also China, uh, Iran, etc., etc. So to be less dependent uh, of the United States, but yet it's still its main trading partner. Uh, and it exported 31, almost 32 billion to the United States, which was less than the year before, but it's, it's very considerable. Now, Venezuela exports to the United States, 90% is oil, 90%. And Venezuela, the imports of Venezuela are other, you know, electrodomestics, um, refrigerators, uh, you know, uh, cars, food, chemicals. Oops, <laughs> typo. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, electronics. So these are the ones that the Venezuelan oligarchy 
has uh, control of because Venezuela, uh, let me see if it's in the next one. Uh, Venezuela <coughs> the, the, uh, the, uh, um, the uh, Venezuela government controls the oil resources, but the, the imports that are bought with the money that it's uh, uh, from from uh, PDVSA, this is not the government who does the who does this trade. It is the oligarchy, the Fede Cameras, the all the business sector that is who does the importing, and they buy dollars from the government, which are subsidized because they need to buy, they are the ones, like uh, the, the intermediary, uh, to buy the things that people need. Because uh, food, for example, uh, the, uh, Venezuela was not so, uh, self-sufficient in food, so they had to import. It has improved, but yet they still need to import uh, many, many products. And this is what the oligarchy does, and that's what the uh, El Mango Por La Sarten, that's the uh, oligarchy's hold on the economy, because they are the ones that buy the things that people need. And that's how the, uh, they have uh, recently, uh, when you see the, the scarcity of products, because they, they hoard them. They have, it's not that there is not, it's that they, they keep it. Uh, so they to, to create this, this horrible, um, you know, imbalance that pe that there is no, uh, and they usually say there is no toilet paper. Like you know, uh, so uh, I'm just thinking of the hibaros in Puerto Rico when they used uh, the leaves of, of, the, of the plants. You know, the, the toilet paper is like there is no toilet paper. The, you know, Venezuela would fall. Um, but but this is very important because this is the part that it's it's uh, it's putting a, a big big uh, dent to the revolution to the advancement uh, and that's the oligarchy that stays there because they know that they have that power. Now, and now come. But now because the I think it was in November that the the enabling laws uh, leyes habilitantes were passed by. Um, were approved by the National Assembly. Uh, enabling laws are laws that I think in, in English here would be like fast track. I don't know if it has the same concept, but it's like that you don't need to, uh, okay, it's fast, like a fast track law. Because in order to control that, um, the cause and, and the uh, hoarding and all that, um, Maduro uh, enacted several laws under this enabling law, uh, and the first two laws were the law to control the cost, the prices, the profits, and protection of the Venezuelan family. That's the name of the first law. And what happened is that when they received this money, subsidized the dollars, the currency, you know, foreign currency, which is real dollars, the dollars from, from the government agency, they will buy uh, whatever they, let's say, they, they buy um, um, uh, machines, uh, washing machines. Uh, maybe they buy it uh, for $100 and they sold it for $2,000. And, and, and really overpriced, every product that they bought was overpriced uh, and had enormous, enormous profit. Then they also created some agencies, uh, phantom agencies that they would put a lot of millions of dollars away and say, no, no, this is an agency for buying special, and no, this was really to, to get money from, from the government, and that's how they steal the, the money. So in order to prevent that, and at least to lower that, uh, Maduro in, uh, 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 approved, uh, uh, passed this uh, first law. The second was the National Foreign <coughs> Trade Center, uh, the creation for the creation of that, which will deal with the currency and, and in a better way, in a, in a more controlled way to control the currency. So it's not like uh, um, 
because the subsidy was, I, I think, was at around 6% uh, interest. So it was very, very low um, that they, <clears throat> they sold the dollars to the, to the oligarchy. So now, uh, and, and also, they cannot uh, sell products beyond, and I think it's 30% the, the value, the basic value, I think it's 30%. Three zero, three zero. And before it had, you know, it was like thousands percent. Uh, it, it was unbelievable. You say, you know, this is this is an error. You know, thousand percent? No, no, no. But but it was true. That's how they started uh, stealing the money from the government, from the people, really, because mm -hmm. this is the money that the dollars that are that come from the uh, export of of oil. Um, so this this really enraged. Uh, the business uh, community more even than before because it's the, for the first time really they are trying to put a dent on their uh, profits. Um, and so, and, and just this Wednesday another law was passed which was the law for the implementation of the administration of foreign exchange regime and illicit exchange. Um, that's, that's still, um, you know, that, that, that was just, you know, day before yesterday. Uh, but these are all meant to restrain uh, profits and illegal and corrupt and uh, illegality and corruption of the uh, bourgeoisie. Now there is another uh, part and it's also the, the political side. We, we saw the economics, now it's the political. It, the, uh, Venezuela uh, when when um, the United States wanted the ALCA, the um, free trade agreement with all Latin America, all the countries, and it's like, you know, let's, let's get them all together. Uh, Venezuela and Cuba uh, started the ALBA and, and defeated the ALCA. So the United States doesn't have a trade agreement with all Latin America and Central America. They have one with Central America, and now they were forced to have unilateral trade agreements with each country. And of course, these are the countries that are more pro use like Panama, Costa Rica, Colombia, and so on. Um, so this, that's why. And also, the, the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the regional integration that Cuba and, and Chavez, you know, Venezuela and Chavez, really put forth to, uh, with the, with the um, uh, thoughts of, of, with the thoughts of Bolivar, of unity, of Latin America and Caribbean unity. So uh, this is a regional integration that it is happening. Not, not only the ALBA countries, which are more uh, pro-socialist, but there is also the CELAC, which is, and these organizations not, <coughs> None of them have the United States or Canada, and that is the difference. For example, the CELAP was an attempt uh, against the uh, OAS, the Organization of American State, that ruled by the United States. The United States was the ruler, uh, is the ruler uh, of that. Uh, and lately, the United States has um, what they were, besides the um, unilateral trade, uh, has tried to put a, an alliance that is called Pacific Alliance, which is Costa Rica, Colombia, um, um, Mexico, uh, which has a, a, a big hold on Mexico. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, it's a very unfortunate, but very, very strong uh, the United States with Mexico. And that is you know, one of the reasons also because of the violence of the <laughs> The reasons of uh, the, the resulting violence in, in Mexico. Um, so that is the political. Now the coup attempt. We have heard a lot, so I'm not going into. Oh, thank you. I'm not going to dwell a lot on the. Um, on the facts or, or the details of the um, of the queue, um, but I just want to show you uh, some of the uh, slides that the embassy, the, um, the yeah, to the embassy sent. Uh, but these are three things uh, that are very important. Uh, who is who are? It is the right wing, the ultra right of Venezuela. 
um, are the foreign forces, which is the paramilitary of Colombia, are very involved. When we hear about all oh, this uh, violence in Colombia, the fact is that there are uh, paramilitaries infiltrated in Colombia that are, are, are assassinating, they are doing the same thing that they are doing in Colombia, they are trying to do in Venezuela and say, oh, Colombia, uh, Venezuela is this terrible, violent place, and they are promoting this. In fact, they have the same um, uh, uh, modus operandi of the paramilitary, the, the motorcycles and, and the you know, really horrible, violent way of, of killing. So, um, and then they are aided and abated by the Organization of the United States, you know, the embassy, the USA, the anything, National Endowment for Democracy. <coughs> Within this, the current actors, because the fact is that, you know, different actors are, but it's the same thing, it's the ultra-right oligarchy. Before it was Capriles, before it was the Ortega, and all that, now it's Leopoldo Lopez. And who is this Leopoldo Lopez? Uh, it's, called, it's from an organization called Voluntad Popular, uh, Popular Will, and uh, he, and you see in the in the media here it's like oh this Harvard educated and you know this this uh, nice looking and they have to say well they never say that he was barred from he was a, a, a mayor of Chacao and and he was barred from running again because of corruption his mother before um, before um, the the oil strike um, uh, the, the oil sabotage, um, his mother was a public relations officer in PDVSA and, get mo and got money from PDVSA to his uh, political organization. How many minutes do I have? Oh, okay. Yeah, I will wind up. Um, Anyway, he he's he's but he's tied with Colombian paramil uh, paramilitary president uh, Alvaro Uribe, and uh, one of the important things that these uh, these actions, the violent actions, are happening is that if you hear the news, it seems like all Venezuela it's it's all this violent action, and it's not true. For example, in Caracas, which is the capital. Uh, Caracas is there is the east zone and there is the the west uh, the I mean the, the east zone um, and there is the the side of the um, of the ridge which is called the it's, it's the Chacao state and that's where um, if you heard uh, Plaza Altamira that's where the uh, right wing that's really the you know the, the birthplace of the right wing that's where most of the right wing demonstrations are. Uh, in Plaza Altamira, in that section of Caracas. And it's that section is where most of the violence have happened. And there are many public government offices there, but they have also attacked them. So, uh, but the other is in Tachira. Tachira uh, you see in the, uh, the border with Colombia. Uh, the beige is Colombia, the green is Venezuela. And the border between the two is a very fluid uh, border, which you don't know, if you're there, you don't know where is Colombia and where is Venezuela, because everything is like Colombia, Venezuela, Colombia, Venezolana, so you don't know when one starts and where the other, what, when one uh, ends and the other one uh, finishes. But Táchira, for example, is a small state of Venezuela, but it's, 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 a, it's a state of its agriculture and, and, and cattle raising, and there are many landowners who are involved with the paramilitaries and the paramilitaries go back and forth back and forth they 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 uh, take illegally uh gas um uh, food but mostly gas they they try to and sell it and they you know they sell it uh, with gallons and not even, you know they, they put a bottle and they so yeah so they they have this uh um, this trade, but, but most of it is, is illegal. They are taking things from, from Venezuela and selling uh, in Colombia. And, um, and Táchira has been now the center with most of the violence. I mean, really violent, uh, burning uh, things. Uh, the, 
The uh, governor of Táchira for the first time is from the PSUV, which is the uh, Socialist United United Socialist Party of Venezuela. Uh, before it used to be a right wing from the COPE, now it's from the PSUV. But the mayor, many of the mayors uh, uh, of the municipalities are are from the uh, Voluntad Popular, from the Leopoldo Lopez. So they do not. Only three mayors. Three, three of them. Three, three municipalities have have mayors. Yeah, that's true. It's not only three. That it's not all the time. Yeah. But these are the violence. This is where the um, the violence. It's it's been um, uh, perpetrated. Um, the other thing is the hostile media campaign. Uh, and actually today, CNN. I, I watch CNN in Spanish, and uh, it's it's complete. Uh, it, Hostile as, as you wouldn't believe. And today they started a, a process to get them out. And I think Patricia Janot and others have been given the, you know, get out of the country. Um, um, this is President Obama yesterday. He was in Mexico with Canada and Mexico trying to, ah, our, our association, eh? Uh, and he says, uh, these are the President Obama remarks, finally given our shared commitment to democratic values and human rights, I want to take this opportunity to address this situation in Venezuela and Ukraine and the unacceptable violence in those two countries which the United States strongly condemns. In Venezuela, rather than trying to distract from its own failings by making up false accusations, against diplomats from the United States, the government ought to focus on addressing the legi legitimate grievances of Venezuelan people and you know, engage in dialogue and, and free uh, what they call political prisoners. Political prisoners are the, the, the some youth, fascist youth, that uh, attack the residence of the governor of Táchira, where there is a therapy center and where children go free to, to get therapy. The, <laughs> so these are the political prisoners that Obama wants. Um, and um, this is in Spanish, but um, he, he says that, um, and that's one, something very important. Uh, Maduro has been very strong responding to US threats. And he says, you know, this is not only that you don't have the right to interfere in our things, but he went more beyond that and said, tell us why you have uh, representatives of your government interfering in the embassy because, you know, three staff from the embassy were kicked out because they, they were caught uh, talking with the opposition. Uh, so far, I think up, uh, eight in less than a year have been uh, expelled from the United States, from the uh, uh, United States uh, uh, people from, from Venezuela because of the same thing. So, and today I saw this, which was, I think, was very awesome because, um, and this is Maduro um, in a wow. meeting with workers. And, this pacific and democratic revolution will take another character, and our character deeply revolutionary. The world should know that we are determined to do everything if it's confronted with a fascist coup. We will deepen and radicalize this revolution beyond the limits that have been known today. So, these are, so anyway, uh, these are just, uh, those are the pictures that were Bend. Mm -hmm. So basically that, yeah. and these are, these are just some of the pictures of, of people, because people have been demonstrating uh, for the government, and there is a, 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 a uh, people are in block, they, they are fully behind, whatever the divisions, uh, differences they have, they are fully behind the government, uh, but they are also asking for international solidarity. That's it.